My friends, I'm not gonna lie, this one's gonna be sad to see go. Welcome back to the review den. And yeah, barring some legal miracle or someone decrypting the offline mode key, we're slated to lose Ivory Tower's The Crew come March 31st. And that's a genuine shame as this was a standout in a glut of open world racers. It's great gameplay, crazy tuning, and awesome, awesome map came together for a one-of-a-kind road trip experience. So join me for a bit of nostalgia as we go for one last ride through the crew. Meet our protagonist, Alex, a man blessed with the voice of Troy Baker and cursed with the denim wardrobe of Jim Varney. Hey, Alex is living his best life as a street racer trying to get ranked or inked in his big brother's racing gang, the 510s. We're given a few prologue races to get used to the handling and navigation before the world's worst team building exercise takes place, and Troy suddenly finds himself an only child at the hands of a corrupt fed and the traitorous teammate Shiv. About the only thing they don't do is take your M3. Troy takes the blame and begins hard time, but before his life turns into prison boyfriend simulator, FBI agent Zoe Winters pops the door to give him an ultimatum. Work undercover for her to clear out some dirty agents, and he gets revenge on Shiv. It's a standard Hollywood contract, we'll even work on getting you some residuals. But only if he retain the film rights. And okay, I'm teasing, but really, it's a totally enjoyable Hollywood revenge racer setup. I wish Fast and Furious went in this direction, this way it'd still be about actual street racing, instead of, well... So, as Alex, we'll have to work our way up the ranks of the 510s, now led by Shiv, to clear out the rot and maybe take in the sights as we enjoy the coolest road trip since Cannonball Run. And more importantly, we have our setup, so we can talk about the crew's unique hooks, what set it apart from other open-world racers. For one thing, since you're working undercover, you'll get some driver-style missions in addition to the usual circuit and sprint races. Sure, you'll need to race your way up the ranks of the underground to reach Shiv, but you'll also need to shadow informants, take down criminals, and capture cargo along the way. Now for upgrades, the crew not only features a unique and enjoyable on-the-fly modification and leveling system, but also has you rebuilding your rides for different race types. You'll spec out increasingly crazy performance tunes for both on and off the road, and while there's a decent selection of cars, trucks, and cycles available, you absolutely can focus on upgrading just a few key vehicles all the way through the game. Sort of like the old undergrounds, a new meaning to loving the one you're with. And speaking of loving others, or not, the crew features a massive drop-in, drop-out multiplayer world which lets you tackle the game with other players for PvE shenanigans, or race against them for goodies and bragging rights. You'll get the option to join nearby players' police chases to help them escape or take them down, and different regions have ongoing competitions for more macro-level multiplayer. But coolest of all is the open world itself. Rather than a city or state, the crew gives you a postcard of the entire United States to explore. There are six major cities represented and worked into the story along with plenty of minor towns and regions in between. Over 240 points of interest are waiting to be found, and while obviously everything is compressed, for anyone familiar with the US and some of these areas, Ivory Tower wound up making a surprisingly believable and nostalgic recreation of the continental US. And the thing is, all these elements work together so well. It's Most Wanted meets Driver meets Test Drive Unlimited, and somehow it all just works as a cohesive solid game. The Devil's Handshake of being published by Ubisoft gave Ivory Tower some awful restrictions, namely the fact that it's online only and about to disappear, but also gave them the money and manpower to make a very polished game. You feel the production values in the gameplay and the presentation. Ivory Tower was formed as an offshoot of Eden Games, who made Test Drive Unlimited, and you get the feeling this is the level they wanted to bring that game to. But man, what they were forced to give up in exchange. As Alex, we begin in the Midwest, where the slums of Detroit and rolling farmlands of Kansas pretty much act as the introduction to the game loop. Agent Zoe acts as the first member of our crew, giving us performance and monetary perks, and we find the street tuner to give some legs to those factory models. Other race types are previewed with loner vehicles, but mostly we're here to make a name for ourselves with the 510s and start our upgrade journey. 
the game map is dotted with hundreds of challenge gates, speed, precision, and stunt, and completing these will add a few points of performance to whatever car build you're driving. And this is a surprisingly clever system. It keeps the pace of the game fast, as you're pretty much always at speed. Wherever you're headed, there will be challenges along the way to improve your car and keep ahead of the opposition. No dedicated grinding sessions to slow things down. Once you've cleared out Motor City, it's on to the grand old states of the Northeast and New York to meet up with an old friend, whoa, nice to meet you too, and help a local chapter pay down his debts. And yeah, it's worth noting that while there aren't a ton of pre-rendered movies, they actually look nice for 2014 and keep you invested in the story. Each chapter of the game adds another crew member to your roster along with their perks and a movie to give them some backstory. The Dirt, or Rally Tuner, is introduced here so you can enjoy some off-road antics upstate, and it's at this point the game pretty much fully takes you off the leash for multiplayer. Different regions have online leaderboards and competitions allowing for some asynchronous competition, or you can of course link up directly. You'll get a bunch of multiplayer credits so you can splurge on a new car here too, if you want. Well, someone watch Supernatural. Paying down the local debts gets Alex in good with the 510s, so it's off down the coast to the wild things and bayous of Florida and the south to expand the gang's reach. And it's here you'll really start to see the environmental variety. The crew is a nice looking game considering its map size and manages to really represent the different parts of the country nicely. The major cities are nicely rendered, but to me it's more the smaller locales that stand out since we rarely see them in games. The quaint little towns of New England, the open plains of Texas, the dairy farms up north, the deserts and faded Americana of Route 66. It's a joy to explore these parts of the map, especially when you've seen some of them in real life, and get that burst of nostalgia you never thought you'd feel again. The cars look good too, but the real fun is tuning and modifying them in each build. Paints, wraps, bodywork, rims, even the interior can be modded if you choose. Some players complain about the higher-end cars being prohibitively expensive, probably to push for microtransactions, but most of these only come with one or two builds. Honestly, the cheaper cars are more useful, as they can be tuned for just about all races. High-performance builds are unlocked here in Miami, and you'll use them to take the south for the 510s. Hey, Cape Canaveral! 20 seconds and counting. E-minus. Minus. Alex moves up in rank and is sent cross-country to Vegas to clean up some smuggling issues. Nice, there's nothing like driving all day and then coming up to a new city during the golden hour. And you'll team up with Roxanne, a hacker looking for her missing sister and apparently moonlighting from the Watchdog series. You'll also unlock the Raid spec. Raid builds are essentially big Baja trucks, lumbering and kinda slow, but they can climb any rock or mountain you throw at them. Which brings us to the handling, which again, like everything else, is surprisingly solid. Yeah, it's arcadey, but it's very predictable and fun, which is good considering you spend pretty much the entire game at high speed. You can power slide on demand, but won't lose the vehicle unless you manhandle it. Each build feels unique, including to an extent the cars themselves. Now, off-roading can get a little janky when combined with the crude terrain geometry, but for all the ground there is to cover, Ivory Tower did an admirable job, which is shown here in Vegas, where you'll be playing Smuggler's Run and tagging packages across the wastes. The evidence points Zoe to her dirty agent, which means all that's left is revenge and California. You'll tour the vineyards and national parks of the Golden State as well as Los Angeles and San Francisco, making this one of the more impressive regions of the game, definitely worth the playthrough. Some games tend to run out of steam near the end, but the crew really rewards you here, and as a side note, some of the West Coast faction races are full coast-to-coast -coast or national tours, pushing on an hour long with the rewards to match. For Alex, though, the circuit spec is made available, fastest in the game, and you'll use it to climb the final ranks of the 510s, bringing him to his final showdown with Shiv. His better angels prevail, though, and they settle things on the street. Well, that's no good, the street always wins, giving Alex his justice and leaving him a free man who will never drive alone, despite the thousands of traffic violations. And the thing of it is, even if you took a few detours through the story, it's likely huge swaths of the map are still unexplored. 
Literal hundreds of challenge gates, landmarks, category challenges, and towns are there to discover. An open world bucket list spanning the country. The story makes sure to hit each of the major regions, but there is so much more to explore. And as I said, as someone who's enjoyed road trips across the country, I can't begin to describe the nostalgia hit the crew brings with it. But Alex won't be driving at all thanks to the online-only restrictions. You know publishers do this to push players to buy their next product, but is the hit to customer goodwill worth it? We know these games can be patched out to work offline, we saw this with Gran Turismo Sport, and because of that, I'm personally much more likely to support Polyphony Digital in the future. They took a multiplayer game, then patched in solo content and the ability to play it indefinitely. I'd much rather buy games from a company like that. And the crew has an offline mode baked in. It's just hidden behind DRM encryption. Playing the prologue or solo races gives you traffic and AI opponents. The multiplayer is just there if you want it. The good news though is that player pushback is becoming a real thing. Publishers adding unwanted changes or restrictions is starting to feel some financial friction, and honestly that's the only way things will ever change. Companies go where the money is. If players keep buying games as a service, there's no reason to stop making them. Whether pushback will save the crew, I'm not sure that's realistic. There's probably more hope in decrypting the offline key, but for future titles, the power is in our hands, so remember that before you click the buy button. And thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, and if you'd like to help a small channel grow, would you be my next subscriber? I'll see you next time, and no matter what, remember to keep going, because you are worth it.